lifting of hand. Do you have a need in the house? Amen. I see see a couple of hands lifting up. I wonder if we could begin to pray uh, that God would begin to meet us in this place. And as he's coming inside of this house, he's already here. As we begin to lift up his name, I wonder if you can begin to lift up your voice and your faith with it. And begin to ask God to fill this place and feel your request. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, this morning, this evening, God, that you'll do a miraculous thing, God. Show up in this house. Let your glory, God, be revealed. Let us feel you. Let us walk away with an experience, with a healing, with a miracle in our grasp. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in this house. And we're expecting great things to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if you could begin to lift up your voice as they begin to sing unto the Lord. You deserve the glory. Yeah. 
can surpass you hallelujah you're incomparable oh hallelujah hallelujah mm. oh come on we're not in a rush here I wonder if somebody could just wait on the Lord just a little bit come on this is what we're made to do we're made to worship him Hallelujah, not just in our own spirit, but in spirit and in truth. Oh, it's to get in the spirit on the Lord's day. I'm telling you, this is the Lord's day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God I got a place to run to. Thank God I got a place called worship to run inside. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Amen. Amen, amen. Don't you feel good in the house of the Lord? This is why we can't have dead church. <laughs> oh, 
is you go in one way and you leave out the same. If you came down frustrated, you're going to leave with more frustrations. You came with anger, you're going to leave more angry at the people, at the men of God, at the service. Oh, whatever you come in with, it's going to multiply with a dead service. Amen. But when you have a place where the Spirit of God dwells and resides, oh, hallelujah, you come in with bondage and you walk out swinging those chains over your head saying, I am free. Oh, you come in with a spirit of heaviness, but God will give you joy when you leave out this place. Oh, aren't you glad for the exchange counter? Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God's so good. You may be, actually before you're seated, I wonder if you can pray uh, for Kaylee's dad. Uh, he needs salvation. Just just keep him in your prayers. Uh, and God's going to do it. God's saving people. God's touching. He's going to answer that prayer. I believe it in Jesus' name. Amen. And Valerie, God bless you. So happy to have you in service with us today. Amen. Amen. There's something for you in this service. God's going to meet us all in this place. Amen. Got a couple of announcements before we get to the offering. Uh, this Saturday at 11 a.m., there's going to be the care package for all the mothers uh, in every outreach area that we've hit. Um, there's going to be a token of our appreciation and our honoring of them this Saturday. So you don't want to miss it. Let's be a part, especially our mothers uh, that are in this place. Let's be a part of that. It's going to be a wonderful time to connect with the parents of the inner city kids in our Sunday school group that comes faithfully is going to be a great opportunity. And then following that Saturday, this Sunday is Mother's Day. Uh, somebody say praise the Lord for the mamas. Thank God for a mother. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be thinking nothing. <laughs> uh, but this Mother's Day is going to be a special occasion as every year and you've heard it said before oh, I've heard this on K-Love if you guys heard this just tune a blind ear but uh, they said uh, what is like a magnet and they were talking about elementary schools and whatnot. like what, what can you compare to a magnet and the kids shouted out and said my mom because she picks everything up um so I am appreciative of a mother, um, and thank God for their, their day. That's the least of their problems and uh, tasks they got to do. So we're very appreciative our, from, for our moms uh, in this house. We give you honor, um, and it's going to be a special that day. Uh, Bible quizzing tournament coming up, Elk Grove, California, at the Rock Church, Saturday, May 20th at 9 a.m., uh, if you want to come out, be a support. It's going to be a great time. They're going to be quoting. You're going to just see their heads spin off as they're trying to uh, spit off those scriptures. It's, it's a fun, fun time. Um, if you want to join me, I'll be trying to get kicked out of the next one. Um, is this recorded? Well, praise God. Now they're going to have security. Uh, but let's come. Let's be a support to the Bible quizzing team. It's going to be a great time as well. Camp West early registration uh, May 19th is when it ends, so you want to get your money in as soon as possible. And if you are planning to be a counselor for either the junior or the seniors, please uh, come to Pastor Sister Caputo and get uh, that buy off so you can go ahead and sign up for that. It's going to, that's going to be excellent. Everything's just going to be excellent uh, this upcoming May. Uh, then lastly, I'm just taking my time, y'all, because I'm, I'm not going to rush through all this. And then be wheezing at the end of this. Memorial Day picnic, Monday, May 29th. I want to see, the, look at that. Beautiful. Memorial Day picnic, May 29th at 10 a.m. at the Chabot Park. You know where it is. Go find the, the, the Estadillo. Estadillo. There we go. Estadillo. Um, and that address up there. Um, praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. All right, if I could have the ushers come help us, we're going to give with our tithes and offering. And what a privilege it is to give inside of the house of the Lord, to give back to God. Um, 
as much as, as he's done for us. We, we can't tell it all, all the things that he's done for us, uh, but we are showing it through our gratitude and our giving here to, tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder if you could help me pray. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time, God, that we're having here tonight. I pray that you'll begin to bless the offering, God. Bless it. And, and multiply it, break it, God. Supply the need, God, of the work of God throughout the earth, throughout this area, God, throughout uh, this, this Bay Area, God. Move, God. Move through this offering, God, that, that you'll begin to affect the world, affect missionaries, pastors. God, do what you will in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. amen. Come forth with your giving as they Victory today. Hallelujah. If you're victorious, lift up your voice. Oh, if you got the victory, lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, singers, musicians. Hallelujah. Amen. While we're standing, going to Ephesians chapter 6. Starting at verse 10. Amen. Amen. While you're finding that, give honor to our pastor and uh, first lady and thank them for the opportunity to share the word of God this evening with you. Amen. Amen. Give honor to you all, saints of God and uh, fellow laborers in the work of God. Such a great time to be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. It, it's really, it's really, I don't know how else to say this, but it's very imperative that we get in it now, sooner than later. Uh, amen. But when you get in it, I guess we're going to be talking about this here in a little bit, but when you get in it, you got to know how to stay in it. Amen. Ephesians 6 and verse 10, give honor to my wife, lovely wife, and uh, she helps me so much. And uh, even just to talk to her and share all my silly visions and ideas and whatnot, she just goes like this, and it just, that, this means a lot to me, um, just, just to be heard. Um, but I know she's willing to go wherever I'm willing to go, um, so I'm grateful for a godly wife here tonight. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Are you there? Amen. Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Pull on, put on the whole armor of God 
that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Somebody say stand against. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. Somebody say, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, able to withstand in the evil day, having done all, somebody say, to stand. Amen. Amen. Having done all to stand. For the next few moments, I just want to preach from this subject here. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Amen. If you'll set down your Bibles, let's lift up our hands before the Lord. I really feel that God's going to help somebody here tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful presence in this place. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation, God, that you will, you will come down, you will comfort us, God. Your, your consolation, God, is better than the wisdom of man. Thank you, Lord, that you will speak to us. You will instruct us in righteousness upon the paths of life, God. Let us be found. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Help us to hear, digest, and understand here tonight. Oh, God, link the pew and the pulpit together that we be on one mind, one accord, in one place. Oh, let your spirit, God, be the bond between us all. Hallelujah. Let us endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in this place. Somebody clap your hands and give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor that's due unto his holy name. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm still standing. Amen. Amen. The word wiles of the devil to literally mean methodia, investigate by method, a settled plan, to follow craftily, to frame a device, or to deceive. The devil's not stupid. Yeah, we call him an idiot, but the Bible tells us that he was wiser than Daniel, and Daniel was a wise man. The devil's and I'm, I'm already off track, but the devil has taken many kings down, many apostolics, many Christians. And, and it's, it's good for us to understand if we're going to fight how to fight. Amen. I've read about an in incident in the spring of 1989 where there was growing resentment amongst university students, others in China for political and economic reform. The country had experienced a decade of remarkable economic growth and liberalization. Many Chinese have been exposed to foreign ideas and standards of living. The catalyst of the chain of events in this spring year of 1989 was the death of Hu, which was a Chinese Communist Party general secretary. He died in mid-April and and he was transformed into a martyr for the cause of social and political freedom. On the day of his funeral, April 22nd, tens of thousands of students gathered in Tiananmen Square demanding democratic and other reforms. For the next several weeks, students in the crowd varied in size. Joined by different people ranging from political, social, and economic reformists, they gathered and joined in that square. The initial government response was to issue just a stern warning, but not really do anything against the crowd. Similar demonstrations rose up all across China, but this demonstration in Tiananmen Square drew close to one million participants. And if you were alive around that time, you understood it to be one of the most broadcast items on the television. Moderates, people that were trying to uh, discuss with this crowd, negotiated different peace treaties and offering different concessions. However, they were overruled by the hardliners in China, who was the premier, who insisted that we are going to forcibly suppress this protest. During the last two weeks of May, 
Martial law was declared in Beijing. The army troops were stationed around the city. However, an attempt by the troops to reach Tiananmen Square was thwarted when all the citizens came and flooded the streets and blocked their way. Protesters remained in the large square, centering themselves around a plaster statue called Goddess of Democracy, which looked very familiar to our Statue of Liberty. By the beginning of June, the government was ready to act again on the night of June 3rd. Tanks and heavy armed troops advanced towards Tiananmen Square, opening fire on them, crushing them with their artillery. Anyone that tried to block their way, this was deemed as the June 4th massacre. Once the soldiers reached the square, the few thousand remaining demonstrators chose to leave because they didn't want to continue the confrontation and the death. By the morning, the area had been cleared out on June 4th. Through, though there were some sporadic shootings throughout the day, June 5th, the military had secured complete control. Though, during the, that same day, there was a notable instance. One lone protester momentarily facing down a column of four tanks right as they approached the square. He just stood there in opposition to government rule. From the outset, the Chinese government, they just wanted to downplay this event and minimize the actions of the military on those nights. And the government will count the casualty around 241, including uh, soldiers themselves, and, and some all uh, 7,000 were wounded inside of this uh, event. But many understand in China that that number is actually a lot more higher. What am I preaching here today is, is that we are those like this lone man, the church, out of all the world standing in opposition to the devil. I just want to preach here tonight that I'm still standing. It may be through flood. It may be through rain. It may be through storm. It may be through sickness or pain. But through it all, I will still be found standing. I get encouragement when I think about the three Hebrew boys and how they stood before an evil Babylonian king. And if they can do it without the assurance of having a, a salvation at the end, how much more shall the church have a stand inside of their spirit? Knowing the end of our reward, knowing the, the justification that we will receive at the end of the fight, I'm telling you, I will still be standing at the end of it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it won't be easy. Hallelujah. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. I will, I'll be jumping in and out of preaching, teaching, whatever, but, but, but I want us to get this tonight. This standing, though it sounds simple, is one of the toughest things to do as a Christian. Especially when the arrows are flying. Especially when you're going through a storm and you're on the boat and you think you're going to die. Especially when sickness has ravaged your body. The hardest thing for you to do uh, is sit there and stand on the word of God. But it will deliver you. I said it will deliver you. They that wait upon the. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. I'm trying to teach here. I'm trying to teach here. Hold up. God bless you. You may be seated. We're not there yet. God bless you. But we have to stand. We have to stand strong. But understand that the devil understands this very well. And his goal is to trip you up. His goal is to make sure you're not standing as firm as you thought you were going to stand. He said to Jesus in the wilderness, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee. 
uh, lest thou, uh, and they shall bear thee up, lest that any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Uh, and at any point in time, Jesus, if, if you're feeling like you're getting tripped up, uh, the devil knows that the angels are close by to help you get through it. And, and the devil's there to trip you up. And the, and the devil is there to make you slip. Uh, and the devil's there to make you stumble. He's looking. He, he understands that you have help on your side. He understands that if you slip and fall, there is a God that will come and bear you up and help you when you stumble. But that won't stop the devil from trying to slip you up. It didn't stop him when he addressed Jesus. Why would it stop him when he addresses us? He will. The first thing that he's going to try to do to get you to veer off and, and lessen your stance is through your eyes. Uh, don't you know that sight determines your path? David said it this way, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps were well nigh slip, for I was envious at the foolish. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He says, for, for there are no bands on their death. There's no strength in, in their, uh, but their strength is firm. They, they are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like others. We begin to look and compare and contrast uh, and, and begin to, oh, 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 here we go right here. I just want to tell somebody, envying and jealousy and, and covetous is still a sin. Oh, we don't hear it all the time, but I'm telling you, being able to look at somebody else's possessions uh, and wish that you've had it and, and long for their possessions uh, is still sin. And it was the very thing that almost made David slip. Because we look at others' possessions. We grow jealous over things. Uh, oh, I, I heard it this way, that you can't be jealous if you don't own everything. But if you own everything and somebody still chooses to serve something else, then, then you have a right to be jealous. But, but because we are sojourners through this land, because this world is not our home, we have no legal right to be jealous because we don't own anything. Amen. I'm just walking here tonight. What about the looky-loos? Jesus said unto the man... No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. It's not the actual return to your prior estate or place, but it's the reluctancy to break up with it. Well, I just looked back. What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that your heart is still connected to it. The big deal is that your affections are inextricably linked together with that thing that you're supposed to break up with. Oh, I'm preaching. Oh, hallelujah. You can't walk the straight and narrow. You can't stand firm if you're always looking back on what used to be. If you can't break the tie, this is why we preach separation. We don't just preach separation just for, from a distance standpoint, but we preach total separation where I cut off the world. I cut off going to the, 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 the clubhouse. I, I cut off going to the ball game. I, I cut off my television. I cut off my cell phone. I cut off those relationships because if you always look back to them, there's always a bridge. And the, the premise that Jesus is getting at is that you can't plow a straight lane. You can't furrow a field. You can't plow and move and look back at the same time without messing up the harvest. Because then you start getting out of line. You start getting into somebody else's, somebody else's lane. You, you start you start. Casualties started happening when you when you look back because you don't you can't see the future. You're so so concerned. Uh, hallelujah! I'm trying to move on. You can't. I got like ten pages here. Uh, you can't you can't move forward. You can't understand and recognize the future that God has for you if you're unsteadily looking back. 
Well, I'm just looking back. I don't see the big deal. Luke said, remembers Lot's wife. He didn't go into all the details. He just said, remember her. Because she's a perfect example of someone who was delivered. Someone who was out of the town. Someone who was physically removed, but emotionally tied. Oh, I'm preaching. Uh, someone that could not cut off their emotions and their feelings, uh, but they steadily had, they had, there was this longing. Oh, what about, the, I got to still put together the kitchen. Uh, or what if we do come back? Or, or what if God doesn't destroy this place? Uh, this was my first house. <laughs> Emotionally tied, she looks back, turns to a pillar of salt. And that area is what we deem as the Dead Sea. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen. amen. The devil wants to trip you up. He wants to get your sights on something else other than where you're supposed to be going, where you're supposed to be standing. But more than that, it's not just the devil here tonight. It could be God. <laughs> here we go. Here comes the swords. It could be God. My Bible tells me in Romans 9, 32, Wherefore, because they sought it not, not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. God will send a stumbling stone. He's not going to send it to the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites. He's sending it to Zion. He's putting it in the church. Oh, hallelujah. Do you not know that judgment first starts at the house? He proves at the house. And those that are not ashamed by this word are those that, that are able to stand. Jesus encourages his cousin John. It said, blessed is he who shall not be offended in me because John couldn't understand because he couldn't quite get a grip on, on if Jesus was the Messiah or not. And he understands that John's view is skewed. But because John can't properly view it, he can't properly believe it, which means now there's an occasion for offense. It says, don't be offended. Don't be offended in me. I go further. We understand that the rock is Christ. The stone is Christ. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat, did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, uh, and that rock was Christ. Amen. That rock was Christ. You continue to read because we get hung up right there because it talks about baptism and the likeness thereof through Moses. And, and one God scripture, the rock was Christ. It's all, all beautiful. It's all the word of God. But, but you keep reading after that, verses 5 through 11, I'll summarize. God was not well pleased with them at that time. He overthrew them in the wilderness. And this was written as an example what not to do. Not to lust after evil things. There goes your covetous. There's the idolatry or, or commit fornications or, or tempt Christ or murmur. Then he says in verse 12, Wherefore let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he fall. Huh. Moses, be careful how you treat the rock. Because you could be standing in the middle of the wilderness right now and you smite the rock. But that's just going to prove to prohibit you from going and standing in the promised land with the rest of the children of Israel that you're supposed to deliver them into. Be careful how you treat the church. Be careful how you treat the word of God. Because then that very thing that you're supposed to be standing on is the thing that begins to fall on you. Amen. He's the precious stone. 
1 Peter 2, 7. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which is disobedient. Well, it's not just the devil here tonight, y'all. Those that are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stumbling, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. The head of corner, the stone of stumbling, the rock of offense is this precious Jesus. But it depends on if you're standing on him or the rock's falling on you. It depends on if you're disobedient. The Bible says a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed. So depending on how, what your relationship is to the word will be what that disposition of the rock will be to you. If you're disobedient to the word of God, then that, is a, that word, the, the gospel, the grace, the mercy would just be foolishness to you as the Greeks said. But if you were someone that is obedient to the word of God, that word is precious. I don't know about you. I feel the Holy Ghost. I've never felt this much Holy Ghost teaching in my life, but I feel it tonight. Amen. Depends on how we're interacting with the word of God. Says, but ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Come on, this is what comes after you recognize the rock and if you're adhering to the word of God or not. You're a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now a people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. There's a sure footing with those that understand that God is precious to them. There's a sure footing underneath the feet of those uh, that says that is the word of God. Uh, there's a sure footing under those that says it is infallible. There's a sure footing. Uh, come on. There's a solid rock to stand on uh, when you understand the precepts uh, and the line upon line uh, and the here a little and the there a little and the statutes uh, and the ordinances uh, and thus said the word of the Lord. Uh, I'm telling you, you can't be shaken when you're standing on the word of God I'm telling you here tonight will you understand that there's one God uh, and his name is Jesus uh, that's all the foundation that you need uh, will you understand that here O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord uh, come on that's the rock that is precious uh, will you understand that there is no God uh, there is no savior there's none beside him uh, then you can say, I'm standing on the rock to stay. Hallelujah. When you can quote to yourself in the middle of the storm, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Come on, I love the word of God, and that rock of offense is not going to trip me up. Jesus is not going to become a stumbling stone to me, because I love his word. I love his law. Day and night I will meditate on the law of the Lord. I'm telling you, when you get the word of God inside of your heart, it's the most precious thing you'll ever receive. It'll be the love letter of your soul. It'll be the consolation in your heart. I'm telling you, you don't need no other counselor. You don't need another friend. You All you need is the word of God. Hallelujah. We get the revelation of giving and can explain it. Then you'll be a blessed person. Then you'll understand that, oh, my fine, everything else may come to chaos, uh, but my finances are standing on a rock. <laughs> When you begin to understand uh, that, that the devils tremble at the name of Jesus, come on, your spirituality will never be able to be shaken or waver. Yeah. You're falling off with the word of God. Yeah. Amen. But it's not easy.
just standing. Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb was the place that God chose to make Israel a nation, a people. Sinai was a higher peak than Horeb. There was three peaks on that mountain. And Horeb is the first peak. It's the lowest. It means dry, desolate, and desert. And you say, God, you're calling me out of slavery. You're calling me out of bondage. Come on, get, get what the Israelites were really going through. You're, you're calling me, this is not just a wilderness, but it's desert. It's desolate. It's dry. They're, they're, they're physical. They're, they're, their mind couldn't wrap around how are we going to eat through all of this. God knows how to make a people. But one of the first things you're going to go through is the dry place. You want to be a child of God, you got to learn how to go through the dry place. You want to be a child of God, you can't complain that, God, there's no water out here. You know what I've learned in a dry place? Fire is more combustible. You want to know in, in, in a dry place uh, that you rub your hands just a little bit together? Fire is a little bit more conducive in a dry place. Uh, and when you really get dry, you'll really be on fire. When you really get sick and tired uh, of being in the desert, you'll learn how to pray. You'll learn how to fast. You'll learn how to read your word. I'm telling you, when you get in that dry place uh, and there's nowhere to go, uh, there's only one way that it will lead you. And it will lead you to God which is the living water it'll lead you to God where you can pick up the rock and water flows out of it but he got to trust you with the dry place before he takes you to the high place he got to trust you with Horeb the dryness before he could trust you with Sinai God Whatever it is for you, for me that you want to pull and do and develop out of me. And, and God, I don't know why I'm going through this. And, and it's one dry place to Sinai. They go from dryness to Sinai, which means thorny, miry, clay. We go from dryness and desolate and having nothing. To having, like the thorns, the cares of life. Now we're concerned about much. Now we're in the miry places, the muddy, the clay parts where, where now our feet is sticking a little bit. And we can't make as much traction. God knows how to make a people. And we, we've tried to figure out why did they complain. You put yourself in those shoes going from dry to muddy to thorny, and you'll, you'll find yourself murmuring. That's what he says. Those that murmured, that, that rock became a fence to them. Standing up is already an act of defiance to the laws of gravity and physics. How much more will it be to the devil and his kingdom? The devil successfully knocked us down. But when we persist to get back up, I really wonder how much it upsets him. The devil is trying to make you slip, make you fall, push you prematurely into somewhere else that you don't belong. But I wonder if there's tonight those that recognize, you know what, I'm just going to stand here. It don't make any sense. It's not logical. I want to fight. I want to flee. But God's just telling me to just stand still. The devil's not the only onlooker. It's God looking at us too. What are you going to do? What are you going to do on that mountain when it gets prickly? Are you going to quit? Are you going to sit it out? Are you going to stop standing? Are you going to let the cares of the world choke you out and because things aren't working in your favor, you're going to walk away, start complaining, succumb to the pressures of life and never advance. God's looking. It's not just the devil. The devil's going to rejoice, but God's confused saying, well, I know it's dry, but I brought you here. 
I ask for you to stand at the bottom of that, of that mountain so I can make you a people. So what, what are we going to do? Because it's dry, you don't see any, fu- any fruit. Because it's dry, you don't, you don't feel any life. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. God brought you there. And if you don't take my admonishment here tonight, I wonder if you'll take the words directive tonight. Because the Bible is very emphatic on what we should be doing, and that is to stand. Well, God, I don't know my next move from this mountain called Sinai, this dry place, this thorny ground, this muck and mire. I don't really know what the next move in my life is, but, but I, I have a feeling that God's wanting me to do something. I'm, I'm just going to run out and run against the troop. No, 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 God's telling you to just hold up. Just stand. Stand praying, Mark eleven twenty five. 25. Stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, 1 Corinthians 23, 30. Stand at the latter day, Job 19, 25. Will we make it to the latter day or will we be found roaming around trying to, trying to get things done ourselves? Or will we be standing there resolute in the latter day? Stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old paths, Jeremiah 6, 16. God is able to make him stand, Romans 14, 4. Anybody ever feel so weak, so burdened down that you, you can't make it inside the church? You could barely get through the church service without someone asking you, is everything okay? I'm telling you, God can make you stand. He lets you, come on, like those angels that were there for Jesus. God can bear you up, lets you dash your foot against a stone, lets you start stumbling. God can gird you up and hold you up and stand for you to stand. Amen. I declare unto you the gospel, wherein ye stand. Where do you stand? Is it in the gospel? Is it in, in worldly wisdom? Is it in entertainment? Where, where are you standing? Paul said, I preach you the gospel wherein you stand. By faith you stand. 2 Corinthians 1.24. The grace of God wherein you stand. 1 Peter 5.12. We're not just standing to stand here tonight. That scripture in Ephesians 6 was stand against. Isaiah 28.18 says, stand against the agreement with hell. And it will not stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil, Ephesians 6.11. Stand before Pharaoh, Exodus 8.20. God's going to have someone standing. But will it be us? There's some people that can't even stand before us. Joshua 1.5, when God is on our side. Stand fast, therefore, in liberty. Stand fast in one spirit, Philippians 1.27. Stand in awe and sin not, Psalm 4, 4. By night stand in the house of the Lord, Psalm 134, verse 1. Stand in the gate of the house of the Lord, Jeremiah 7, 2. Stand perfect and complete in all the will of God, Galatians 5, 1. Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, Exodus 14, 13. If you you can't get any more straighter than this, stand upon thy feet and I will speak to you. Ezekiel 2 1. But many times we just want to lay down, quit, throw in the towel. And God's saying, stand up on your feet. Stand up. Not don't just stand. There's more directive to stand upright. We are risen and stand upright. Psalm 28. Stand upright on thy feet. Galatians 5, 1. We are to stand. Somebody shout, stand. Proverbs 24, 16 says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. We are a standing people. I'm coming to a close here. The devil... He doesn't want you to stand. He hates when you get back up. 
I'm talking to somebody. He hates when you find out that you've got greater inside of you. And you, you begin to stir up that spirit like Timothy, Paul told Timothy, and you begin to rise back up. The devil hates that. The devil hates when you understand that I, I, I must submit myself, therefore, to God. Resist, resist the devil, and then he will flee from me. The, the devil hates that. But here we go, Matthew 4.11. Back at the temptation in the wilderness with Jesus. It says, the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Luke gives us a little bit more clarity on what happened after Satan had quoted scripture and said, the angel's going to bear thee up, lest I dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus answered and replied back to Satan and said, it is said that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Standing will not be easy. Standing is not an easy task because the devil will come back. Hear me tonight. He left Jesus for a season, for a period of time. And you read throughout the Gospels where he came back. Right after the wilderness, the devil showed up in church. Right after that, the devil stirred up the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Shortly after that, in the book of John, the devil began to get the masses upset to, to try to stone Jesus. Because he said, my father, me and my father are one. The devil showed up with a troop of demons and one man at Gethsemane. The devil influenced Peter at one point in time to speak contrary to the will of God. The devil actually successfully entered Judas to betray Jesus. Even that Calvary, the devil showed up to wag his head and speak blasphemies at the bottom of that cross saying, If you be the son of God, save yourself. The devil will try you. I'm going to stand on the word of God. Is our, I'm going to stand firmly inside of his, his kingdom. I'm going to stand firmly in the church. I'm going to stand firmly in my mind. I'm going to stand firmly in my stance. But the devil will try you just like he tried Jesus. He'll try you in your mind. When you say, I made up my mind, I'm not going there. And then the thought pops up. He'll try you in your stance and your consecration that says, I promise, I vow to God that I will never do. That's a stance. Your convictions. He'll try you in your health and see how well will you stand when your body is touched. When your family starts going in shamble, how well will you stand? When nobody wants to live for God, though you taught them from a babe. How well will you stand when all the securities of life are fleeing you and you just by nature want to chase after it because of your insecurity? Will you run or will you stand? Your relationships, they come and go, but will it affect your stance in God? Your ministry, or lack thereof, your emotions, your dreams, your visions, all these things the devil will love to try to take a swing at just to make you buckle at the knees. Peter said this, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing that happened to you. No strange thing has happened to us except for our stance is being tried. Are we just believing or is this true faith? Brother Kevin taught me a long time ago, because we believe it doesn't mean that it's reality. You know what makes it a reality? When it's tried. Don't think it's strange that your stance is being tried. I'm preaching this for a reason. 
Don't think that because we're in the last days, I don't know if you know it or not, and, and our stance will be tried. Not how well we can sing and shout and dance. will be. None of that will be tried. They'll take that away. But even when the music's gone, how well will you stand? James 1 said, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When it comes by. When the circumstance falls, when the clouds begin to lower and turn gray, it's not strange, but I will be standing. I'm not caught by surprise because the devil hates the church, but I still will be standing. He can touch my body and I will not curse God. I still will be standing. He can touch my finances, but I will still find something to give unto the Lord. I will still stand. I'm preaching to you tonight, just stand. It's that simple. Just stand. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Musicians, you can help us here tonight. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the methods, the entrapments, the devices of the devil. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to just stand. I'm not omitting the rest of the armor. We know we need the armor. Otherwise, you're just a, a punching bag for the devil. But this directive in here doesn't give us any offense but to be clad with the garments of the armor and stand. Because it is God that fights for us. Why, why can we stand? It's because God is on our side. And he will do the fighting for us. It don't seem logical to just stand. It seems elementary to just pause. It don't seem productive. It's definitely not the fastest route to victory. So we think. But I'm just encouraging somebody here tonight to just stand. I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what, what's been clouding your walk with God, but I felt a burden to just tell somebody. There's a barrage of tax, but all you have to do is just stand. God will do your fighting. Lastly, before I close, we could all stand. One day, a farmer and his donkey was walking. And the donkey fell into a well, an old well. That animal cried with pity. For hours, the farmer was trying to get that donkey out, trying to figure it out, trying to get ropes and haul him up. But he, he finally decided that that donkey was way just too old and probably lived the majority of its life. And the well needed to be covered up anyway, unless it was going to be a hazard for somebody else walking by. So the farmer invited some neighbors, gathered some friends. They got some shovel, and they just started digging, start heaping piles of dirt onto that donkey. They're shoveling. Farmer resentful because he's been with that donkey for all his life. All the, the work that that donkey put in on that farm. He's resentful that he has to do this, but he couldn't find any other way. But because he's so remorseful, the farmer looks into that well, old well, to see how much they've buried the donkey. 
And they realized that the donkey had stopped crying. The donkey stopped crying. And the farmer's just looking at the donkey. And as the others are just throwing piles of dirt on it. I'm telling you, the devil's relentless, y'all. As the devil is just piling it on, mounds, pressure, anxiety, you, you name it, in that well when it's inescapable, and you, you feel like you can't do anything, you can't run anywhere, you, you feel captured, you feel surrounded. The least logical thing to do is to just sit there when you're being buried alive. I'm telling somebody here tonight. That farmer looked over that well. And the other friends are just throwing on dirt. I, I, there's so much preaching that, but they're just throwing on dirt. And to that farmer's amazement, that donkey would get a mound of dirt placed on him, shoveled onto him. Farmer just looking, and that donkey would just shake off that dirt and stand on it. And they're just throwing more dirt, throwing more dirt, more issues. The bills aren't getting paid. People are backstabbing. The people are leaving the church. The, the people are getting offended at me. I'm getting sick and God hasn't healed me yet. And dirt after dirt after dirt is being piled. And, and the donkey just shakes it off and takes a stand. Repeatedly they do that over and over until that well was full and the donkey steps over the ledge of that well and walks out free. <laughs> I'm telling somebody, all you have to do is stand. But I'm being attacked. But everything's crumbling around me. The devil is after me. I feel like I haven't obeyed the word of God and I feel like God's after me. Just stand. I'm getting nervous breakdown. I get anxiety. I feel clustered. I feel like I'm not going anywhere. Just stand. There's no money coming my way. I can't get a job. I, I, there, nobody wants to be in a relationship with me. I'm telling you, the most beautiful thing is when you're able to just stand. Oh, hallelujah. I know he's cute. I know she's cute. But are you willing to stand? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted above the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. You're not going to be destroyed from this. <laughs> Put on the armor of God, but stand. Put on the sword. Put a, grab the sword of the Spirit. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Let your loins be girded about with truth, but stand while you're doing it. Because we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair we are persecuted but not forsaken we may be cast down but we're not destroyed it's because we're standing and we're standing on the word of God I wonder all across this house I wonder if somebody can begin to cry out unto the Lord. If that, if I've been preaching to you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't delay my coming to this altar, but I will hasten to this place and say, God, you know what? I, I know that you've been calling me, and I'm just going to stand flat-footed, and I'm going to stand sure, and I'm not going to waver in my faith, but I'm going to stand believing that you're able to deliver me out of this. I'm still standing, I'm still standing. It doesn't matter what the trial may say. It doesn't matter what the doctor may say. It doesn't matter what the doctor report says. I will stand in the comfort of the Lord.
come on it may be a dry place uh, but can you stand and hear the voice of God it may be a desert place uh, but can you hear the law of the Lord come on stand uh, stand against the wiles of the devil stand in the evil day stand at the latter day stand and praise the Lord stand and give thanks stand and magnify him I will be standing I will stand I will stand I will stand I'm going to stand in the house of the Lord. I'm going to stand in the gates of praise. I'm going to stand in his kingdom. I'm going to stand in the will of God. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be. Before your presence came and changed me. I won't be shaken. I won't go back. But I'll stand.
came and changed me. I'm not going back. I'm never going back. I'm not going back to the way it was. I'm not going back. I'm never going back. I'm not going back. 